tonight. Here's a look back at the best runways of the top three of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16. This is Reality Reflex. Before we begin, make sure that you like and subscribe so you can get all of the Drag Race and Reality TV content. Hey everyone, it's Tedley here, and each week on this review, we celebrate the best looks of the runway. Here's a look back at our picks of the best runway looks of the top three of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16. My first favorite runway look of this week was Nymphia Wind, who she was coming out giving banana burlesque. So from beginning to end, she started green to yellow to spotty to brown, and she gave truly a beautiful burlesque banana performance. And then lastly, we had Plain Jane, who first she comes out giving beautiful, elegant woman fantasy, and then all of a sudden to like a Boston trashy mess. And it's like, oh, you can smell her. It looks like she's at the bar. It was a look and it was inspired. And girl, oh girl. Up next, I had Safira, and so she was coming out and she was giving elegant regal fantasy she was giving just the ultimate like flowy blue gown look and it was classic and elegant come to find out she is a bad bitch underneath with some titties going round and round so they said it was budget titties or my first titties or whatever but it was still cute it was still a lot it was still from beginning to end a full show and then nymphia comes out as little boy blue and this look oh my goodness I mean, shit, did she blow half the budget on this look alone? Because she comes out looking fabulous, top to bottom, and she's like, oh, that's just look number one for me. And I'm like, okay, bitch. So she is coming out rocking little boy blue, the fanciest little boy blue I think I have ever seen. Safira comes out. She is dressed as the pumpkin. Uh, what pumpkin is this? The who? Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. Okay, so she's coming out dressed up as a fabulous fairy tale pumpkin. It is over the top, it is fabulous. Her bustier is like the um, the vine of the pumpkin. This is such a good look. I love how big it is, I love how fabulous it is. It's once again a full show, it's a full experience. You're going to the club, you will leave happy that you went. Nymphia Wind comes out as Angelina Jolie. I guess I don't get the reference as far as this actual gown. Maybe this was a wedding gown or something. But so anyways, she had her friends back from home decorate the gown, their own art and creativity on it. She was giving homage to her friends and her family. And that is love, okay? She was bringing that shit to Drag Race. And so, I mean, seriously, she looked beautiful in the outfit. Plus it was meaningful to her. What else could you ask for? Okay, and then Plain Jane comes out and she is giving Octomom realness. Now, partially, I feel like I'm being sold this because the reference photo they used was Octomom's pregnant belly in just some awful room. Oh my goodness, I can't believe they used that. But so anyway, she comes down the runway. She is just giving camp. She is giving her signature style, which we've now come to expect. So she has a baby scarf that she was just walking around. She did the Tempest Du Jour baby birth. She did it all. Next, we had Safira Crystal come out as the ultimate original Mother Eve. And oh my God, like I have to say, this is probably my favorite Eve interpretation of all time. This Eve was so sexy. This is the Eve storyline I've been waiting to see. Nymphia Wind comes down this runway and she is giving everything. She is giving twisty ties. She's giving Alice in Wonderland fantasy illusion. She's giving magical. She's giving mystical. She's giving otherworldly. She's giving anything but the same old same. And she's here to say, bitch, whose runway is this one? I'm here to take this crown, bitch. Plain Jane comes down the runway. She is giving 80s hooker slash Mariah Carey. So she is wearing just a couple fabrics here and there, you know, just to cover the necessary areas. But other than that, you're there to look at her mane, her legs, her shoes, and just her owning the runway. And she is just like, bitch. Safira Cristal comes down and she has also constructed something as well. She is giving us Bob the Builder. She's holding a little screw or whatever. So she made a silhouette. She's giving aesthetic. She gave us yellow on the top and the bottom to coordinate. She was coming down with a well-developed look. 
Ooh, and then Nymphia Wind comes out. And is it like anybody else was even on this stage? Okay. She comes out giving the full Egyptian share fantasy. We all know this look. And damn, I didn't even know she had those legs to serve like this. Where were they hiding this whole time? Holy fuck. This body, this whole image. Oh my God. She was giving a side of her that we didn't even know she could give. Plain Jane comes down the runway and it's basically like we are watching the real Cher come down the runway. She's doing the real thing. The hair was perfect. Bitch, this look, she slayed it. She did the thing. This was Cher. Oh, yes. Once again, I am I am really taken aback this week. OK, this is <laughs> she killed it as Cher. And then we have Safira who, OK, she is giving the most. She is giving a look. She's giving over the top. She is giving Cher. This is such a good look. It is big and bold. She is just giving regal goddess. She is giving everything. This look will go down in history as one of the gaggiest gags of the Cher runway. Oh, and then Nymphia comes out. And once again, bitch, it is over. So she comes out. First, she has one wig she takes off and reveals this amazing like fierce ass red pussycat doll wig. And then that shit comes off and then she reveals something that looks quite controversial. She looks like she's presenting the JJ realness on the back of her head after she lifts off that final wig. But head to toe, this look once again, bitch. Just the level of drag mama. Plain Jane comes out, she is giving s and realness. She's giving crazy titties. She's giving gas masks. She is giving some, you know, some underground kink scene realness. Oh, she was presenting it to all of America. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, but it was cute. It was sexy. I mean, who can be mad at that? It was good. Like she lives up to the reputation she presented herself. Safira Cristal comes out and first she is giving a beautiful black and white realness look at first, but then all of a sudden the aesthetic goes even further. She takes off the pussycat wig to reveal that it is a pussycat. And not only that, but she is giving Dr. Evil realness. She is giving Austin Powers throwback fantasy. Oh my God, wasn't even expecting that because the look was just so fierce on its own. And then she comes out giving a classic movie nod. Yes, Safira. Oh, come through. Up next, we have Nymphia Wind, who once again is coming out in her signature yellow. However, this time it is giving banana strawberry smoothie realness. It is just giving beautiful pastel elegance. It is giving cute. It's giving fabulous. It is giving Nymphia. It's giving, oh, you want me to do this outfit again? It was like just giving glamorous elegance. The doll was a perfect match. It was just once again, effortless chic. It was fabulous. All right, so first up, we have Safira Cristal, who is coming out in Opera House realness. She is giving regal. She is giving right proportionized body. She is giving waistline. She's giving hip thighs and ass. She is just giving elegant regal, except she's gonna slap a bitch realness. Her doll looks equally fabulous. Her doll has the wave flip hair going on. She is just giving major looks. She's giving major fashion, major I'm about to win this, didn't even need the immunity potion level. Oh my God. And then Nymphia comes out and she is just like, oh, someone else was on the runway. I didn't notice cause bitch, this is the only look. She is coming out giving aesthetic. For me, this isn't just even a look. This is a full show. She was coming out and revealing that her hands are the flowers coming out of this pot. She had the little flower at the top of her head. It was giving visual. It was giving art performance. It was giving so much more than just a look. And so once again, Nymphia just came through and ate this runway. Up next, we have Safira Cristal, who once again, she is coming out in a jaw dropping look. How the fuck did she fit all of this in her luggage, okay? She is coming out looking like the flower, the budding goddess. Oh my God, she is coming out giving stage production realness, high quality, top notch drag. Oof, once again, damn, this bitch is coming through on this runway. Nymphia Wynn comes out and once again, did anybody else even walk this runway? Cause she just tore this runway to shreds. She just once again was giving this runway 
everything. This look was so over the top, once again, taking us to a fantasy that we usually would not expect to see on this runway, seeing something that is so well designed, so well crafted, so otherworldly mama. She is really taking us on a journey, exploring the inner depths, the inner workings of her mind, and she is pulling through with this look. All right, and then we have Plain Jane, who is also coming out in a silver fringe fantasy. She is giving it. She's giving look. She's giving fabulous. She is giving polished. She is giving refined. It's a little more low-key, but I'm really liking that for her this time around. It's giving a new side to Plain Jane on this runway. I love for her that this is an understated realness moment because she already fucking killed it earlier today. So just give it to us classy style, you know, give us something that's a nice little juxtaposition to what you did on the Snatch Game. And she did. Safira Crystal comes out and she is giving tribute to Drag Race. She is in it for the long haul. She said, you know what? Maybe I wasn't on the show back then, but I am here to represent Drag You. She came out in the Drag You colors. She was giving performance. The judges were absolutely living for how she was performing on the runway. She's giving us homage realness. This was over the top. This was so perfect. This was such a fan service moment for all of us that have been there for years and years. So yes, mama, come through. Nymphia comes out also giving Black Widow realness. So she was giving aesthetic. She was giving head to toe. What was really beautiful about Nymphia is with this headpiece. It was just over the top for me. All black, mysterious, dark lady, different elements, feathers, sheer, all combined to give the Nymphia experience. We were expecting no less than this. She was coming through. I was getting authenticity. I was getting element. This will go down again as another iconic Nymphia look. She didn't even need no yellow except for in her teeth. Serve it up, Nymphia. This was a look. This was an aesthetic. Come through, mama. Yes, God, work. All right, so here comes Plain Jane, and she is coming out giving me a true goth realness aesthetic look. So firstly, when she was showing her little sketch, I was like, girl, this looks like all your other Russian looks. But when she came out and she embezzled it with all of the fabulous little ribbons and the chains and the straps coming down, I'm like, okay, bitch, this is giving me goth the house down boots. Yes, the boots that you have on right now, girl. But so anyways, she was serving it. I was living. This was a cute look. She had her little teardrop face you know giving a full goth emo fantasy so come through plain jane nymphia wind is coming out and she is giving chiquita banana realness it's giving brazil it is giving hot island weather it is giving banana once again it's giving yes i do the same fruit every time but it's going to be a different look every time it's going to be a different silhouette it's going to be a different fantasy and she is definitely taking us to once again another plane of reality with this look She is saying, I can give all kinds of backgrounds. I can give all kinds of style, all kinds of look. I can do it. I can be that bitch. And I'm going to do it all in yellow. This time she got banana titties. She got the banana Chiquita banana dress. She got the hair. It is perfect. It is a look. It is a reference. Oof. She is slaying. Plain Jane walks down this runway and this is the motherfucking best she has ever looked on this show, on this runway, maybe of all time. Who knows? The mug is giving her typical mug. The hair is giving glamour puss. The outfit is giving statuesque goddess realness as she was bragging on herself. She's like, oh, my body's right. My body's right. She was coming down giving the absolute most. This dress just was stun level a thousand, okay? The greens, oh my God, she was like, Michelle, fuck you if you don't like this. I don't even care if you don't like this color because on me, this look is absolutely amazing. Safira Cristal comes out and she is giving Marge Simpson goes to the opera. This is an over, over, over the top gown. There is so much going on here. I see chains. I see sparkles of shimmer. There is volume to the motherfucking dress. She is wide. She is tall. She is giving it no matter where you go. Is there even going to be room in the club if she wore this? So it is just giving over the top elegance. This is the political episode and she's wearing blue head to toe queen. Oh, okay. She is here to think about this process. Okay. They were calling it Marge Simpson hair. And yes, it is. But it's not even giving like bad camp. It is giving fierce fucking Marge Simpson hair. Over the top, goddess, 
Victorian elements, colors, volume, elegance, refinement, grandeur. Bitch is giving it all. Nymphia Wynn comes down this runway and she is giving stop the presses, hold up once again. Holy shit, damn realness. She just looks amazing in this outfit. The things that make this the most 80s for me is definitely the shoulder pads and the Keith Haring, once again, graphic realness. The rest of the look was giving me modern day fierce, fabulous woman. The headpiece maybe is a little 80s too. The boobs, isn't that 90s of Madonna? I'm not exactly sure. And then what's going on with her pussy? But I mean, the elements all together look fucking fabulous. I don't even give a shit if this is or is not 80s. She was just coming down this runway serving up a motherfucking look as she always does. She came ready to give us everything this season. All right, so first up on the runway, we had Plain Jane who is coming out in authentic 80s realness. This outfit is giving me graphic design. It's giving me 80s bright colors. It's giving me some 80s hair, 80s makeup. Just the whole thing is totally a serve. The proportions were right. Her body was right. She was looking good. She was giving the fantasy. The body and the shape was giving me a little bit of Peggy Bundy realness, but hey, that's 80s and bitch, she sold it. Safira comes out and she is giving me 80s gown, but this is also giving me the Trixie Mattel ugly dress realness from season seven. It's the same silhouette, different colors, also 80s. But so with that said, I mean, this is 80s realness. This is like what a real bitch would wear to prom or something back then. It's giving 100% 80s. The colors, the way the elements are put together is so 80s, almost disgustingly so. But you know what, bitch, I'm convinced she was taking me to that 80s prom. And the hair, oh my God. The hairspray amount you would need for this wig is exactly the amount you needed back in the 80s. So she was coming through with the realness. She was coming through with the authenticity. Bitch, oof, she served it up. Nymphia Wind comes out and she must have heard whips and chains in this description of the fashion runway. So she is coming out and she's not in yellow to all the haters out there. But so she is giving a slutty corset fantasy. Unlike most who would go a kinky dominatrix black leather route, she is giving this baby blue with a baby blue whip. It's giving East meets West to me in the best possible way. She looks fabulous as always. I mean, is there even a question there? The chains were done beautifully in this look. So she's like, oh, you wanted some chains? Well, I got some more fashions for you too on top of that. So it wasn't just featuring the chains. It was featuring everything else as well. Plain Jane is coming out and she is giving C3P ho realness. This look, I wasn't getting too many chains, but I was getting futuristic Robotron Zendaya Dune realness. She was giving silhouette. She was giving body. It was definitely obviously giving futuristic. The hair really was a good choice. It has like the extra Star Wars buns in it, but it's also off the shoulder. So the feature of the look is the garment is the masterpiece. She is coming down giving 3008, giving her plain Jane aesthetic as far as silhouette is concerned. And then she's featuring this fabulous ass look. So I mean, who can complain? All right, and then we have Safira coming out and she is giving switch it up on you fantasy. She is coming out as a leather kinky puppy. She has a fucking fire hydrant purse, okay? I like how her dress has spots like a dog would have spots. This is actually giving me a combination of pup play mixed with furry because the ears are more cartoonish. But she is giving it, she is representing, she is giving the world this piece to look at here. And she was making all the crazy noises, she was getting into character, she was going wild in this look. The judges were living for it, I was living for it. I'm like, yes, another head to toe, fully realized, conceptual, well aware of what's going on and I'm here to do drag. Look, she said the theme will be chains and these bitches are gonna come out kinky. Well, they're gonna say, hold the press, bitch. I'm coming out as a fucking puppy. Plain Jane and her drag daughter came out in matching outfits. So Plain was coming from the house of Rebecca Glasscock. Just give what RuPaul motherfucking wants, fantasy. 
Rue and the judges will always 100% stand an exact outfit replica. They want the exact same shit. They want to see bitch and bitch. Plain Jane came out in the color of bumblebees on the same day that Beyonce dropped her new album. So these looks ate it up. The makeup was great. They were given great fantasy. It was just another serve, another slay, another yes bitch moment for Plain Jane. Nymphia Wynn comes down this runway. She is giving an East meets West edition of Mary Antoinette. So she says the patterns all have dragons. And then of course the Mary Antoinette aesthetic and silhouette is coming through on the other end. And so anyway, she is coming out, she is giving it. And so once again, just so it said, not a yellow look. So come through Nymphia Wynn, surprising us once again. Plain Jane comes down this runway and this look to me is a near the end of the finale. Coming to the end, need a fabulous runway gown look. The fan element was a little downplayed for me, but the overall goddess feel was everything. So she was coming out giving perfect breasts, she was giving a golden goddess color palette. She was giving Taylor Swift country era hair. She was giving regal. She was giving top of the line. She was giving yes, I'm a motherfucking drag queen. She was giving hell yes, we are coming to the end of this chapter of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. Safira Cristal comes down the runway giving African fan realness. So what she has done is combined the fan aesthetic with African materials and patterns on the gown. And in addition to that, she's giving her signature Safira Cristal Blue Fantasy. So she is coming down giving all of that. Plus she is giving hair show competition realness with this crazy headpiece that's like a circle. It looks like a tire or a wheel. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be a fan, but it is once again the next level. It is giving just one more element to this overall epic, iconic, end of the season gown. Yes, Safira Cristal. All right, everyone, that was my RuPaul's Drag Race season 16 top three fashion recap review. I want to unsee it. <laughs> Make sure that you like and subscribe so you can get all of the RuPaul's Drag Race and reality TV content. This is Reality Reflex.